Hi, welcome to Helicopter Train Videos. In this video, we're going to look at airfoils. This is another in the Basic Aerodynamics mini series. First of all, let's have a look at a definition. So, an airfoil is any surface that provides a useful aerodynamic force when moved through the air, or air moves over it, or a combination of. Okay, let's have a quick look at some examples of aerodynamic forces and their related airfoils. Uh, lift, the most obvious one is an airplane wing producing lift. Negative lift, which is lift acting downwards. An example of that would be the horizontal stabilizer on the back of a helicopter. Control, a good example of that would be the elevator on an airplane's uh, tailplane. Stability, a good example, the vertical fin on a back of a helicopter. Thrust, propeller. There's an obvious example there. And then some uh, airfoils are a combination. An example would be the main rotor of a helicopter, which can produce lift, control, and thrust. So I went around the airport today to get some photo examples of these. Let's just quickly go through those. All right, first of all, we have a wing. This is a Cessna 152, uh, and obviously that's producing lift. Now we have a negative lift example. This is the horizontal stabilizer on a Robinson R-22 helicopter. This is to produce downforce in forward flight to stop the nose of the helicopter pitching too far forward. Here is a, uh, an airplane's elevator on the far right of this picture on the tailplane to control the pitch of the, of the airplane. Now here we have an example of stability. This is the, um, if on the left hand side here you can see the horizontal stabilizer coming out from the tail beam of a R-22 helicopter and then we have the upper and lower vertical fins sticking out from the top and bottom. And then if you look in the right hand side of this slide here I got underneath the helicopter and took a photo up looking at the, um, the, the lower vertical stabilizer. You can see the stinger sticking out in the bottom and then you're looking up towards the uh, horizontal stabilizers at the top of the picture. Here we have a propeller from a Cessna 172. Not a great picture but you can kind of see uh, the airfoil shape there. You can also see the blade twist in there. And here's Something's very familiar to R-22 pilots. This is the main rotor airfoil on an R-22, which is a good example of the combination producing lift, thrust, and control. All right, let's have a look at an airfoil and uh, label the different parts of an airfoil. At the front of the airfoil is called the leading edge, and at the very back we have the trailing edge. The cord line is an imaginary line that's drawn between the leading edge and the trailing edge of an airfoil. This is important as it's used to determine uh, blade pitch angle and angle of attack. These will be covered in later videos. Upper camber is uh, basically showing the, uh, was describing the shape of the upper surface of the airfoil. Lower camber is the same, obviously, but it's the lower surface of the airfoil. And then we take the distance between the upper and the lower camber, and equal distance between those two, we get what's called the mean camber. Cord is essentially the length of the cord line. So it's the cord is the length of the airfoil from the leading edge to the training edge. Blade span, that is the distance from the tip of the blade into the center of the hub or the center of rotation. Okay, center of pressure. Center of pressure is where the center of all the aerodynamics forces are said to act. It's located, it's always located on the cord line and it varies where it sits on that cord line by the airfoil shape and can be modified by the angle of attack. We'll cover that later. Okay, here's an example of an asymmetrical airfoil. So you see how the cord line does not line up with the mean camber. Uh, so the upper and the lower half of the airfoil are not symmetrical. Let's compare that to a symmetrical airfoil where you can see the mean camber line and the cord line match because the top half and the bottom half of the airfoil are symmetrical. Here's a, an example of a symmetrical airfoil. This is the R22's main rotor. You can see pretty good picture here that this looks symmetrical. The top and bottoms look the same. Now this is a picture of the R22 tail rotor. And I know it's kind of hard to see it because it's at a slight angle, but um, this is an asymmetrical. It does not have the same upper and lower camber there. They're slightly different. So if we line these up alongside each other, you can kind of see better. So if we look at the asymmetrical, we can see the cord line does not evenly split the airfoil upper and lower sections on the tail rotor, but on the main rotor it sits right down the center of the airfoil shape. OK, 
Okay, let's have a quick uh, comparison of asymmetrical versus symmetrical airfoils. Let's start with asymmetrical. And like I said, this is something you'd find on the R22 tail rotor. That's an asymmetrical airfoil. Generally, asymmetrical uh, airfoils are less stable. And what that means is that the center of pressure, which we, we mentioned earlier, as the angle of attack, which we will talk about in later videos, as the angle of attack, which is basically the angle that the blade hits oncoming wind, as that changes, the center of pressure moves up and down the cord line and as it moves it kind of wants to twist the airfoil and that twisting motion will require stronger materials and construction to avoid uh, the stresses. It can also put um, strong control loads through the system. They tend to be more expensive because they're more complicated in their design and also in the materials and the construction but they do pro generally produce more lift. In fact asymmetrical airfoils usually can produce lift even when you're not pulling up on the pitch, you're not increasing the pitch angle of the blade. And I know we'll, we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in later videos, but uh, essentially it can pr produce more lift. And uh, it also usually pr has a better lift to drag ratio and better stool characteristics, which again we'll talk about later. Let's compare that to symmetricals. So symmetrical airfoils like the R22 main rotor and uh, apparently on most other light training helicopters too. Um, it tends to be more stable because the center of pressure doesn't move or doesn't move very much. So that reduces blade twisting and also control loads. Usually easier and cheaper to make for the same reasons we've already talked about. Um, there's less requirement for stronger materials. It can be more simple in construction. And But the downside is, of course, that generally they produce less lift compared to an asymmetrical airfoil. All right, so this was just a, a little bit of an overview between uh, asymmetrical and symmetrical airfoils and airfoils generally. If you want more information, you can check out the FAA Helicopter Flying Handbook in the Aerodynamics section. You also have the FAA Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. It has a Principles of Flight and Aerodynamics section covering airfoils. ASA Helicopter Oral Exam Guide Aerodynamics section and the ASA Private Test Prep Aerodynamics section. There's other books uh, out there. Um, I'll let you uh, look at our links if you're looking on helicopter training videos we have some links to some other suggested books and one thing I'd suggest is with all these aerodynamic uh, subjects practice drawing these things out you'll get better at it and if you ever intend to move on to become a CFI um, start early start drawing it out now alright thanks very much for listening any comments any feedback any suggestions please send them on we like hearing all of those and uh, we'll see you on the next one